with an animal, I don't, we can animate things in Blender what normally is not uh, possible. Um, I'm going to animate uh, the weight paint and with the weight paint we can drive particles but we can do much more with the animal add-on. The bandy bone handles add-on gives a handle to the bandy bone and um, so far I am using it like this but if you have ideas on how to use it then you can put it in the comments but it's already very nice to use it like that. The Blend Lux Core add-on that works uh, quite uh, good now here in Blender. I did uh, path, path tracing and that works quite fast. So if you have a good graphics card then I think it's worth it to try it. Mm, it has some um, shaders like here the metal material, some presets and it has also the Disney material. And um, complete car paint material uh, doesn't reflect immediately in the preview, so that means you, you need to render quite a lot of a render view. On the top left, oh, the code editor done. That um, you see here are some tabs, and um, you see on the right we can drag like this to scroll through the code and it has uh, some options to turn off minimap tabs and then guides white space and it has some uh, settings and uh, preferences you can open it but there are more add-ons for the text editor for example the add-on template generator you can give it a name, you can uh, select uh, operators and I'm not sure what it is but oh and you can choose uh, panels where they have to appear that's already uh, a disaster to look up on the internet and we have uh, more add-ons uh, there is, a, oh yeah, so this generates this add-on and if you select text, and that's another add-on, you go to edit, edit, and then search online. And then you can, for example, look at a API reference. You see it in the URL, bpy.types.operator. So on Blender add-ons.org, you see a list of other add-ons for the text editor. For example, the snippets library add-on, uh, search online, we have seen that, and the uh, add-on generator template. Next, commotion. With commotion add-on, we can generate um, offset animations. For example, I select here a few objects and I anim animate them all together, make keyframes. And then in the um, motion add-on I press offset animation and on the left bottom I see this pop-up and then I can change the trash threshold and if you then run the animation then you see an offset like this so that's pretty handy next is the cube server the cube server is remeshing uh, particles and that's a good thing because it also means that we can add uh, modifiers. For example, here I use the um, smooth, smooth modifier. EasyFX, that's for uh, compositing. You have to be a little bit careful um, how you are going to use, uh, for example, brightness, contrast, etc. Because uh, loads of uh, things are a breaking. Uh, you can also use the EV Express and make some notes and that is using the, um, I forgot the name, uh, ACDL, AC, I believe, uh, things that doesn't break that much but if you use it wisely it's uh, pretty handy. I don't the easy FX. Then, oh yeah, you have 
for some things you have to re-render. I didn't try that out, but that will probably also nice. Next one is the export paper model add-on. Here we have a model and if we go to file, export, and then we can export it as paper model. On the right you see a lot of options. Um, we get an error if we rename it, but that's okay. So you can export as PDF or as SVG. And there are loads of other options. Uh, what it does is uh, to print out on a piece of paper and then you can cut it out oh, over the scissor and then you see how you have to uh, connect those parts and uh, show some tabs. So we open here the PDF file and here you see the result of that. So that can be very creative. Next one, easy lattice. So you have an object, you go in edit mode, make a selection, press right mouse button, and then um, it adds a lattice modifier, and it jumps right into the edit mode, and then you can deform your uh, model like that. So that's quite convenient. Next, uh, Flexi Bezier add-on. You can, um, it's quite comfortable, com comfortable to make curves like that. You, you can click, but you can also click and drag. If you click, you got straight lines and click and drag, you get then lines like this. Um, you can also extend the existing curve by pressing Alt and then you snap it to the existing, existing curve and then you have one curve like this. Uh, you can also edit the curve by clicking and dragging uh, a line or a dot. That is also nice. And we can also go in a draw grease pencil and the grease pencil has the benefit that you can uh, dis distribute the vertices better, better than with uh, curves. So if we convert those back to curves and to mesh, then it's, it's uh, easier to model with that. To uh, resample, you have to press stroke and there's an option somewhere. This is make a human software, probably you know it. And if we go to Blender, to the add-on, we can, just can press import human because make human acts like a server if you set it up right and then you have to have it straight away in Blender. So that's pretty convenient. Next is the molecular script. Molecular script. Uh, what it does, it uh, makes um, a relation between the particles. It's a bit jiggly here, but if you do it well, then it could look like this. The node expressions add-on, that has a bunch of nodes for in the shader editor. And you can add nodes like these here, are two examples. So it seems to work a lot with functions. Oh, I don't know how you call it, but. And I've seen something with Mandelbrot. How do you call those? Next one, OptiLoops. That's very, that's a very interesting add-on because 
with uh, this you can uh, dissolve edge loops uh, which are not contributing much to the curvature so you can reduce poly count without reducing too much the shape maybe you can use it with um, remeshing as well uh, the pipe radar add-on here I have model that's way too complex for the pipe radar add-on you will see that because the pipes are not looking well but you get, will get the idea so I have a model press out pipes and I had to wait a long time and then you see a lot of options um, and the operator I, uh, how do you call it um, so that's uh, very nice not sure why I'm going to render this but here we have a render of it then next one is polykilt uh, polykill is very handy all I do is I just used um, I believe only the left mouse button we can click or we can also click and drag we can click on uh, a vertex or an edge or click and drag on a vertex edge and they are all doing different things so I don't press any key to extrude for example just the left mouse button and then I've set up a snapping I believe that I did it manually but it is works pretty intuitive not super fast but very you, you can put it faster you can in the preferences you can set real-time animation so you can uh, just move the mouse and the, the the bone is following the the mouse cursor so you don't have to insert keyframes and change uh, the rotation uh, we are going a bit too fast but this is the retopo mt add-on so that works uh, uh, pretty nice so we just um, make a stroke with a grease pencil looks like and then you have the keys w and x to reduce or increase the poly count it has more options you see that on the top uh, you don't see it now because i put there all the names of the add-ons but it could work um, in some cases this is very handy then the soft mod, uh, soft mod you can uh, uh, click on your uh, model and then you can add a witch, widget on that uh, place and then uh, um, actually it makes a bone and then you can um, deform your mesh or animate it with uh, or shape keys or not I like to use it with the NLA editor instead. Yeah, here you can mirror the weights, you can do a lot of things. Smooth weights. So that's another kind of um, modeling or deforming your mesh. Not modeling, but deforming let's see yeah now I'm going to mirror the weight paint so I call it mirror the weights and now it's both correct soft wrap very interesting so we have here the low poly on the left high poly on the right and we are going to place the approximately uh, that 
together and then in the add-on you see there's source, source and target. So the source is then the low poly, target the high poly. And if you press, oh yeah, you have to change some settings like we have here uh, mirror, uh, we reduce the stiffness, uh, drag a little bit up and snap. If you press start and then the snapping strength up, then at that moment you see the um, the low poly um, snapping to the high poly and you can make some corrections by dragging like that some parts doesn't look well but if you add a um, subserve modifier one time then I think it looks good this is just a simple model some models uh, is a bit uh, difficult, I think, especially with tentacles, it's not that easy. But meshes uh, like this are a bit more complicated. I think that work uh, pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to delete the shape keys, apply modifier, we can check. Now I compared it with the quad mesh modifier and some other remeshers. But for this model it had a good good uh, result. So car is not on you can that's note editor you can completely model your um, object and add some logic. Here this is a tag draw. Um, it's a bit confusing at first but you see all those check boxes. For example the top one in the middle that's then top view. Um, but then those on the left and to the right you get a 3D view. And then there are loads of other settings uh, like setting a camera, setting a sheet, etc. Um, at the end you have to, I think best is to use workbench and then turn on cavity, turn off specularity and then you render your um, thing, uh, scene in workbench. Those uh, three models you have to scale, scale it yourself and place it properly on the sheet. And it's a bit tricky to get the sheet white and the letters black, but you have to play with the materials. So the add-on doesn't do everything, for, uh, especially the render settings, but it's okay. Here the texture paint layers, that is, uh, that works like the um, layers you have in Photoshop or in uh, GIMP. So, for example, I have a head and then I'm going to paint the eyes. I name every uh, layer. So, I'm painting here in the fuse. It's a bit long time ago I played with this add-on, but I still had this recording. So, I've got a little bit how it exactly works. I see there are drop box. Oh the drop down menu mix so you can also apply other settings I suppose next um, not yet yet texture synthesis so uh, texture synthesis is actually a kind of um, other software and this add-on is um, a port to the, the software that's a, like uh, they call it a kind of platform so what it does is it can do several things but what I show here is I believe it's called style transfer so you have two pictures you have one picture that is uh, has structure like 
uh, stones, coffee, like those pictures you see here, and one uh, picture like the woman's face. I'm going to use that one, and I mix that with a structure, in this case, coffee beans. So then the texture synthesis is taking samples of the coffee beans and it will place that properly on the on the woman's face. So in that way that you still have the structure of the coffee beans but so it's not like overly. Here we go to the system console, I believe the name, I always forget the name. And you see the progress, it can take um, uh, a while. If ever you see an error in the system console, um, most likely that means some some features that does not work with uh, JPEG or with PNG. So you might want to uh, experiment with that. It can also make tile uh, tileless textures and uh, can do other things, but I found tile transfer most interesting one. So this is not an uh, overlay. You see, everything comes from the coffee beans. Only they are arranged a little bit different so that you see the woman's face. This is a welder, so we have selected two objects, you don't see it because I turned it off. And then you go to the welder, you press a weld. And if you click and drag the first time, you adjust this size. And if you click and drag again, then you rotate the weld. But most likely when you give it a material, then you will see often that you want to rotate again. You see here it didn't turn out that nice, but if you rotate it then it looks exactly what we want, like that. So it's not, oh, here we have the wiggle add-on, so it's very easy to use it. So you have an uh, armature, you select some bones, which you want to have a wiggle effect. Then you go to the tab there with the bone and then you click on wiggle bone. I turn down the stiffness because it's a bit uh, high. And then you got, got it like this. The next one is uh, Wonder Mesh. Maybe it's uh, redundant if you have already add-ons that can do non-structive uh, workflow to model your mesh. It still is uh, useful because if you have a Wonder Mesh, you don't have anything yet in the modifier stack. And still you can add something to the modifier stack. And to make a mesh like that is just a few clicks just shift A and then at one mesh. So some cases this might come in handy. So yeah, you can add boolean and after that you can go to the object tab and convert the wonder mesh to a normal mesh. Still you can in the object tab you can um, adjust all the parameters. 